Oh, yes. And we are live, ladies and gentlemen, another episode of the Brown Water Banter Podcast. I am Jared Seymour. My name is Joey. He nailed it. And we are here today with Paul. Paul from a lot of stuff, man. Paul from Tuna Town Talks. You got your own podcast today. Uh, And also from the Mexican Gulf Fishing Company. Got it right there. We're going to jump in and talk to him today about all the things he has going on. But before we start the episode, like we always like to do, we want to mention our sponsor. That's right. Southern Magnolia Smiles, man. That's Dr. Robbie Williams located right over here on Washington Avenue in Ocean Springs, man. Big supporter of the show. He's been helping us get uh, keep the thing moving along for a while now. If you're looking for a great local dentist, uh, just an easy to talk to guy, uh, great at what he does and can take care of you, go hit him up. Uh, they're on all the socials at Southern Magnolia Smiles, Instagram, Facebook. Uh, if you're not in, into that kind of stuff, go check them out uh, on their regular website at www.southernmagnoliasmiles.com or call them on the old landline at 228-215-1202. And we appreciate them uh, keeping us going, man. Yeah, thanks a lot, yeah. Dr. Robbie. So, Paul, what's going on, man? How are you doing today? Oh, I'm doing great, man. Thank you for having me on the podcast, man. I can't thank you guys enough. I've kind of reached out to you guys but uh you know trying to promote my own podcast as well as a mexican gulf fishing company but uh life's great man yeah so we'll clarify right out the gate you have your own podcast where you talk to uh charter boat captains that you target uh the guys who are fishing out of venice louisiana is that right right so um uh, just uh you know i've been in venice since i was 19 and uh kind of looked up to a lot of the captains down there a lot earlier than that um even and I always enjoyed the stories and stuff that they would tell. And uh, I started to realize if nobody would sit there and record them, that they would just get washed away. Right. And a lot of them were, I mean, just some of the stories they tell are just incredible. A lot of them I still haven't even got to put on the podcast yet. And uh, I don't know. I just had the call in to try and document those and, and try to give some of these older captains that exposure that I think they need. Um and yeah, man, it's it's been a lot of fun. It's opened a lot of doors. I've, you know, I, my second podcast was with Mike Fernet, the uh, first. He was one of the first captains ever in Venice, and just being able to talk to him about, you know, what tuna fishing was like in the 1980s yeah. and uh, things like that, man. It's just that's to me that's a lot of knowledge, a lot of things you can learn from from that. So I, I don't know. It's been awesome, man. And I, and a lot of the listeners that I've had, it's it's not a ton yet. I've only been doing it for a year. But uh, a lot of listeners seem to be loving it. So, yeah, it's been good fun. Yeah, it's awesome. And it's, yeah. a, I mean, when you hear tuna, you I mean you are already funneled to Venice, Louisiana. <laughs> you know, a couple of our guests come on here and we were trying to still a little something towards Biloxi, but tuna is the, I mean, Venice is the tuna capital world. Right. For sure. Right, yeah. The fishing down there never ceases to amaze me. It, it really is incredible for sure. But besides that, you know, I am, uh, I'm the inshore guide with Mexican Gulf Fishing Company. Uh, I've been with them for a little over three years now. Um, I've been in Venice for seven, eight, seven years now, almost eight years. Um, before that, I did all the offshore, and I, I kind of realized that the uh, the thing for me to do would be to go inshore just because I really like uh, meeting people a lot more. Uh, yeah. I like whenever people are actually casting and, and hooking the fish themselves. And uh, offshore, not to say that that can't also be true, but there's a lot there's a lot less opportunity um, in the offshore. Sometimes right. you're only going to get a couple bites. And uh, I don't know. I thought it would be a good fit for me, and it, it was probably one of the best decisions I ever made, man. I, I can't I can't tell you how much more I've enjoyed, you know, being a guy, developing these relationships with my clients, and uh, you know, getting them to come back because. You know, that's one of the things I really think that's different from being a guide in Venice versus, uh, you know, back here in Mississippi or, or along the Panhandle. Um, I was a guide out of uh, Dolphin Island for six or eight months at a time. But the big difference is whenever people come to Venice, they're coming to fish. Right. You know, they're not coming to the casino. They're not coming yeah. to hang out with There's their family. There's nothing else <laughs> There's to do. There's nothing else there. Yeah. So uh, as a guide, it puts a lot more pressure on you. You have to get better. Um, you have to put these guys on fish. Um, so that, you know, that, that's a really cool aspect of it. You know, fishing down there is, it's a lot more, pre- we do get family trips and things like that, but I, I'd say it's, you know, it's one day you have a family, the next day you got this guy that has gone to every fishing destination in the world and he's looking for something very specific. You got to bring it. And you got to bring it. 
Yeah. That's awesome. Now, now you're a you're a fairly fellow, fairly young lad, right? We were talking earlier about yeah. it. Yeah, I'm um, 25. Yeah. So, how did you cut your teeth? Did you deckhand? You said you were all had some offshore. You did some over in Florida. Is that mainly where you got your, your um, start? Man, I guess the the passion comes from my my dad, my brothers, my family. Um, you know, we grew up diving. My dad was involved in the artificial reef program, so part of our monthly deal was to go out and survey the reefs once a month. And so I guess that's where the passion kind of happened. My dad, he did, he did some charters growing up. He didn't, he didn't do it full time or anything, but I would, you know, kind of help with that. But, uh, and then, um, I actually got on, um, a, uh, a big yacht, the sweet Liberty. Uh, I don't know if you'll have heard of that boat, but I fished one tournament season with them and the captain, uh, Charlie Davis. I can't thank him and, and the owner enough for giving me my first shot, but they actually got me a job on, the Lady Anne uh, charter boat out of uh, Dolphin Island, and I worked with them for six or eight months, and uh, that was good fun. I'm still get really good friends with the first mate King on that boat. Um, it was it was a lot of fun, and uh, that ended. And uh, that next season, I found a job in Venice, and I started tuna fishing down in Venice, um, and I was a deckhand for a while. Yeah. Uh, Got involved with a, a private company down there, just entertaining their clients. It was a big company called Brand Energy, and I did that for a while. And while I was with them, I worked with Mexican Gulf, and uh, and, and then I made the decision to buy my bay boat about three years ago, and uh, that's what I've been doing ever since, man. It's been it's been a lot of fun. Sounds <laughs> awesome, dude. You're uh, <clears throat> full time with it. That, that's what you do now. This yeah, is that's that gig. is my full time gig. Yeah, right now, you know, I've I've been wide open since. I, I generally fish from February to November. Um, however, uh, Jan uh, December and January I actually fished a good bit this year as well. Um, so we fish. You know, fishing in Venice is year round. It's a lot of the techniques and uh, things change throughout the year. But uh, there's a lot of fish down there, and yeah. uh, it's been good. I mean, I fished. Uh, 20 days in in uh, february and probably do another 20 this month and awesome March, yeah. did you uh did you notice the uh covid spike in business a lot of the charter boat captains that we've had in here said that when covid the lockdown started they saw an increase in their business did you did you notice the same thing yeah we did man we we had a ton more calls last summer um then you know a lot of us were already booked up <laughs> right we, we yeah. had already been booked up but uh yeah the call volume and everything and as well as Man, this year, I mean, it's it's been nonstop, you know, and 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 part of the difficult thing, Mexican Gulf Fishing Company, for those that don't know, is is a uh, it's a charter company that was founded by some some uh, I guess the olders of the you know Kevin Beach, Billy mm -hmm. Wells, and Rimmer Covington. Right. They formed it, and uh, it's it's n it's not easy to be included with those guys. They they're very selective in who they pick, and uh, you know, for me to get on with them, I try to thank them as much as i yeah. can and and be you, you got to carry that name with pride absolutely man and i can't thank those guys enough because you know it, it's been a it's been a building process for them to uh you know their market was tuna fishing and for me right. to come on as inshore it's kind of a, a different market in a way the type of people you know yeah. that want to come and just catch redfish or you know whatever it might be um, so that was, you know, that was kind of a, a transition, but now it's really, it's really taken off a lot more yeah. and we should have, uh, in the next year or so, I think we should have one or two more inshore guides that come on with us. Okay. So right now you're the only one, right? Right now I'm the only one. If people want to book with me and they, they, you know, a lot of them have parties of six, I'll, I have a group of guides that I use and we'll book with, you know, with them, but I'm the only one that's like right. with Mexican Gulf. We talked so earlier. Right. Go ahead, Jared. No, no, no. All I was going to say was we got some comments coming in. Uh, Josh Harmon uh, says, what's up? And that he's had uh, some good fishing trips with you before. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And then uh, we got Chris Four uh, coming to us from Twitter because we're on Twitter as oh, well. Yeah, Twitter, yeah Twitter, he's Twitter, saying Twitter. Uh, he wants to know, is uh, Colin Bird still with y'all? Absolutely. Yeah, Colin yeah. is. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So t take us around the boat. What do you fish? You're obviously not going in inshore in one of those big Freemans, right? So what, what are we fishing on? Uh, so I got a, I got a 24 foot, uh, blue wave yeah um i've had it since uh 2018 it's a great boat man i can't th say enough good things about it and uh as well as uh furlands marine over there man they do good work oh they they do great work yeah. and uh it's you know for a guide you really have to have somebody to lean on from time to time whenever it comes to make mechanics or anything like that and uh yeah. furlands is just that for me i yeah. mean i can i can call them and uh they, they do answer they do help me 
whenever they can. I know that, you know, and you got to keep in mind they're busy and stuff, but uh, right. they always find time for me. And I, you know, I can't thank them enough. And I, I hope everybody out there, if you want to look for a boat, you need to at least go stop by Joey Furlan's. I think, I think that a lot of places around here usually do a good job of kind of nudging, you know, you guys who make a living off of it to the front, you know, cause when y'all go down, yeah. the boat goes down, you're not yeah. making no it's money. It's a little so. different. It, it yeah. is a little different, man. It's like, look, I'll pay you whatever. I just, yeah. I got to go. got to get in there. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Uh, we got Austin Powell in the comments. He said, uh, you know how to sniff the fish out or you have a lucky horseshoe on. <laughs> yeah. So what, what I'd rather be do. lucky than good. Any That's day. right. <laughs> That's yeah. right. It works that way sometimes. Well, tell us how this works because usually my trips down in Venice, so you either leave of Cypress Cove or Venice Marina, you run all the way down in the river to the mouth and then you're out in the Gulf of Mexico. So take us through an inshore trip typically out of Venice. Where do we run? Where do we stop? How does that work? Um, so with if you book a trip with me, I, I, I'm going to try to do whatever the coolest thing that that I can reach that's going on at that time. Right. Um, uh, typically, that's redfish for me. Uh, we can always get to redfish. Now, if you come and the, the weather's really good and, uh, you know, I got a feeling about something else, uh, but none to run to the islands, the Chandelier Islands, which yeah. our end of the Chandelier Islands, you know, we got like Breton Island, Gosher, Curlew. Yeah. I'll probably stay at those more than the ones that are closer to Biloxi. Um, so we'll do that. I do uh, right now in the spring and then the, the early spring, I'll fish some of the short rigs for like lane snappers and sheephead and things like that i've done really well on those this year those are fun um, to catch oh yeah. they're a lot of fun and they're very very tasty as well absolutely um, i hate that people are figuring that out yeah because for <laughs> the longest time <laughs> people threw them away secret. and didn't yeah. didn't keep them at yeah. least I, what i remember crab bait yeah yeah, yeah. yeah i mean a lot of I mean, people are finding different stuff to target i mean i've just heard of a sheephead tournament you yeah know? that was us yeah, thought, right right know, guys. yeah. <laughs> that's right hey it's cool though man that, that's good no um but other than that, you know, we'll target uh, mangrove snapper, cobia, uh, triple tail, yeah. uh, you know, pretty much anything I think that, you know, cool is going on. But, you know, the cool thing about Venice is we got about 30 miles of marsh. So even if I can't get off a little bit to go do that type of thing, I can always come back and catch redfish. And, uh, you know, if it's blowing a little bit or it's just not worth it or you might be old and you don't want to go. Don't want to take <laughs> that You don't want to do yeah, anything yeah. that's hard. You want to yeah. just, you know, have fun and catch a few fish. Then, you know, we'll stay by the marsh. So yeah. I like what you said, though, about the, the inshore thing. I always have kind of that debate with myself. And even when we're all together hanging out, talking like deep sea is more fun. Inshore is more fun. Uh, I, people I, tell all the time. Everybody's kind of got their own opinion on it. But and, and both is actually the answer. Right. But there is something about inshore fishing, man. It's just it's just a blast. It's, it's I think it's more interactive. Um talk with people more it's a little less intense you know right what I mean? right so right I, I i think uh i get people on my boat from time to time that say you know all oh, that the offshore is more my thing you know right and i i probably get more i don't know maybe just about the same amount if not more people saying you know that offshore stuff's fun but yeah this is where it's at well, you, you know right. what i mean you gotta be in shape <laughs> to offshore fish because it's yeah. not i mean even on them big boats yeah. you know what i'm saying it gets up and it's you know and at the end of the day whenever you're talking about going fishing everybody uh there's it's it's not really about the fish it's about the camaraderie right. and having a good time absolutely um, and it seems like that's more feasible inshore yeah. most, i mean if you get out there and it's it's rough and they don't bite uh, that's, that's a tough, tough. pill right yeah. there. Better have, you better have had a lot of beer on the <laughs> yeah. right. that, no doubt, right? Yeah. Oh, but if you do come to Venice, uh, I recommend that everybody do a day of each. Uh, yeah. There's just so much down there to see. To just go down there and get on the boat and go blow down offshore, that's it's fun. Beautiful. But there's there's other stuff there. I I, I think that people uh, you can enjoy every aspect of Venice. <laughs> Well, just experience the river because it is a madhouse if you've never been there. And it's Absolutely. crazy to see all these boats going in one way. And, yeah, in the fog. Ooh. Yeah, alligators <laughs> piling up, logs piling up all over the place. So it, it's it's a cool thing, man. Uh, Mitch in the comments says Captain Donnie Jackson is the man in Cypress Cove. There it is. <laughs> is he with y'all? Uh, no, I do know him, though. Oh, uh, okay, okay. okay. Do, know him. do you go out of Venice Marina? Yes, or you Venice Marina. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Mexican Gulf Fishing Company primarily All operates out of right. Venice. Marina. How many boats total are y'all? Um, man, I want to say there's. So it sounds like a big operation. Seven, oh, wow. seven offshore boats, and then me. I want to say seven. Yeah. Okay, that's a that's a lot. That's a lot going on. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's a lot going on, man. They it's 
it's crazy going down to Venice because there's not much other there there other right. than like fancy boats. Right. Like you won't see a meeting ground for badass center consoles like you no. will in Venice, yeah. Louisiana. <laughs> yeah. That's there's, for sure. It's kind of weird, man. You get there and it's like, wow. <laughs> boats are the only thing there, really. <laughs> yeah. and, the, and the two marinas. Yeah. And one little dollar store and a daiquiri shop. <laughs> daiquiri shop. Been to that one. Yeah. So, so you're down there working as a deckhand. You work your way up to running your own boat. And you is this? Am I getting the story right? You start hearing all these stories, and you're like, "Well, hell, I need to start a podcast and capture these stories at least in audio form, so that they don't get yeah. lost." Right? Yeah. No, definitely. I mean, and I, and a lot of people listen to Joe Rogan, but I will say he's a, he is a big inspiration for a lot of people. One hundred percent. Yeah. And he did that for me. I don't know what it was. I just kept thinking about it. And I saw God being in the entertainment business, just like comics were. And I thought it would be, I thought it would be a good fit. And I still think as time goes on, you're going to see more charter captains do podcasts. Absolutely. I think you're going to see more of everybody do podcasts, yeah. whether it's their own yeah. or their guests on it, because it's, it's a great way to meet or to uh, be exposed to target audiences. Yeah, you know what I mean? Exactly. Versus a commercial on television. And a, and a lot of uh, just about anything you do in life is networking. And it's, I mean, it's a really good way for people to know what you're about, you know, what, what you're getting into. And, you know, I, I don't want people to get on my boat with a, a different idea as to, uh, you know, who I am. You know what I mean? So if you listen to my podcast enough, I feel like you get a better understanding of why I'm out there fishing, what right. I'm doing, you know, it's That's, kind of because every captain's got their. I mean, you get a fly fishing captain that doesn't keep anything. You get a meat hauler that keeps them all. You know right. What I mean? right. There's, a, there's a balance and there's there's different captains for different people. So And that's kind of what we've tried to streamline. We want to put a face to a name. So when you're looking through charter boats, hey, that guy seems cool. Boop, click on him. There yeah, it is. Exactly. Same way you're kind of doing down at Venice. So you're, you're just getting stories. From right, right, right. Getting stories and you get a better feel for the people and. I don't know. It's good fun too, you know. <laughs> that, that's the main thing, man. It's just a good time, right? Yeah, is, I mean, you get to, uh, an excuse to go talk to these people and get to hear these stories, right? Yeah, man. It's crazy. Like just this morning, I went and did one with um, Captain uh, Patrick Ivy of the Breathe Easy, you know. And you know, you see that boat's name on the leaderboard from time to time, <laughs> more often than not. Right. And uh, to be able to sit down and talk to a captain of that caliber, uh, man, it's just cool. You know yeah. what I mean? Like it's, I mean, it's kind of tough to, to get them, but when I'm finally sitting in front of them, you know what I mean? It's like, there's so much to learn from these people, you know, yeah. there's so much to, to hear. So no, it's, it's, it's awesome for sure. What's but, your, what's your background when it comes to audio and, and being a host? I mean, did you do anything like that at all? Or are you not at all, man? I was in, there? I was in theater in high school a little bit, but, uh, not, not much, you know, I'm, I'm sure people can tell. <laughs> So did you did you jump on YouTube and start like trying to figure it out the, oh, you know, course, the game of recording you know, and of all Of course, that? whenever I first got into it, you know, you're like, oh, what's the way to make money? Or what's it. this? Yeah, let's Google it. Yeah. You know, oh, you don't want it to be an hour long. You want it to be 30 minutes long. There's all these different, but like honestly, I haven't listened to any of it. Yeah, yeah, don't. I just do just it all. Talk. It. Just yeah. do yeah. it. Yeah. Talk and just. I don't know if it if it works. I mean, I'm not making any money with it right now. Right. If it does, it does. It doesn't. I don't care. Yeah, and it's it's good fun, you know. So Absolutely. Right. And what's crazy is nobody else down there that I know of is doing it, and it's kind of like the fishing capital of. It's kind of a, and I, I said it a few times, is it's kind of a, uh, it's a mecca to have a podcast because you got thousands of stories mm -hmm. with yeah some of the most interesting people you'd ever meet, and uh, nobody's got a podcast, so it was like a, and I I don't know, I felt like I'd. I'd be decent at it. So no, you bring sure. it on, man. Hunter in the Sorry. comments says that uh, Venice is nothing but a boat show at the end of the world. That's, that's exactly <laughs> it. Uh, man, that's, that's right. That's exactly uh, it. Do you know a Craig Baller? Yeah, yeah. Dude, yeah. He's he a said, very, very good client of mine. He yeah. said he he hasn't fished with any guys that work harder for their, for uh, their clients than you do. So there awesome. it is. Yeah, a lot of good. Awesome. A lot of good. Yeah. Uh, Donald Butler says you're a beast. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Uh, yeah, and then uh, the Southern Hood says a great interview. Thanks, we appreciate that, Sweet, man, so man. much. Yeah. Thank y'all for listening. So, but yeah, dude, that you're right. I mean, there's, it's it's fun. It's a good time. Uh, I can only imagine the types of stories you're you're able to capture with these oh, guys yeah. and the amount of history that's down there, right? Because these guys have been doing this for a while. So long they can, time. Man. They can long probably time. tell you. I mean, have you got any good stories? What it like? Man, what like the 80s so, were like versus the 90s. So I started the so I started the podcast um I last last uh, March. I do a lot of spearfishing. Last March I shot a 183 pound yellowfin. 
Ooh. And I did it on the boat with uh, Joey Davis. Um, you guys might know him. His dad, Sam Davis. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sam. Uh, <laughs> Sam's, Sam's in the comments yeah, a lot. We yeah, love yeah, Sam. We like, we love <laughs> Sam. He's a good guy. Yeah, he's a good guy. Um, hey, you and, just got back from down there, too. Like, yeah, last yeah, week, they were just yeah, down yeah. there. Yeah, he was down there. So I was on the boat with him and a uh, good friend of his, uh, Foad Zayed. He does a lot of filming and all that kind of stuff. Well, right. he got it all on video and me shooting this big tuna and everything. And Joey was kind of my lead to getting into Venice. So I was like, man, this will be a perfect podcast. Right. So that's how the podcast started. And uh, then I had on uh, uh, Mike Frenette. Um, he was, you know, uh, one of the first. And the story that he told me, he said his first time ever tuna fishing out of Venice, they went offshore and they just saw acres upon acres of big yellow fins blowing up. And they think they said they caught 10 or 15 of them. But he said out in the middle of all of them, you see them all blowing up. There was like 20 whale sharks. I and believe it's just it. like a, you know, a, the, the, the image I got in my mind is something off of National Geographic. Right. You know what I mean? Just something yeah. you won't ever see again. Yeah. And uh, I don't know. This cool. There's a lot of cool stories like that, man. It really is. Like, well, for them being like the, the, the founders, you know what I'm saying? Just going down there to the end of the world, launching a boat and going to catch tuna. That's, yeah. I mean, it's crazy. You know oh, what yeah. Saying? It is. It's so crazy. What uh? What what's did they have? They caught wind of any of the guys over here in Biloxi doing the tuna trips uh, out of the out of our end of town? Oh man, they've been doing it for a while. You know, ever since I've, I mean, there, there's been you know people started here and there. That I think that the the biggest problem that they're gonna have out of Mississippi or out of the Panhandle, any of these places, is the consistency. Yeah, yeah. and the dry and the ride, yeah. right? Right. So like this time of year. <clears throat> There's certain times of year where they'll come in close, and uh, you know they'll have some good trips here and there. But you're not, you're not going to get on the consistency that uh, Venice has. We, we, the reason why Venice is, you know, a lot of people to the west and a lot of people to to the east of us, you know, they don't get all the hype behind Venice. You can catch them out of here, you can catch them out of there. The thing is, is that Venice has so much more bait, um, so much more bait involved that you know, if if you want to run out to this side of the river because you know there's bait there and then run 70 miles the other direction to go catch the tunas. You can do that. Whereas out of Mississippi, you might not always have that bait. Right. And that's just as important as the fish themselves most of the time. I mean, you don't have bait. You don't you don't have any. Y'all pulling a big nasty mullet out the river anyway. Well, you catch. <laughs> I mean, do we? It, it does. There's no secret when it comes to bait. I mean, yeah. Tunas will eat anything that there's a lot of, whether it's a lot of pogies, a lot of horn bellies, a lot of whatever you got. If yeah. you got a lot of them, they'll eat it. Yeah. So y'all are rolling live bait more times Mo- than more not? More times than not, we do live bait, yeah. Okay. Yeah, usually trolling around the rigs, waiting for them big blow-ups, and then hold on tight, right? Yeah. yeah what, what's awesome. what's the significance as far as, uh, is it noticeable between the live bait and the plugs down there when it comes to yellowfin and stuff like that? Oh, yeah. If you want to catch a lot of them. I mean, the thing is, is that, uh, you know, tunas don't, tunas don't feed all day long right they feed every day but they're not going to feed all day long so in order to be able to catch a lot of them quick you need live bait a, yeah okay yeah so i'm not saying you go out there with a popper and throw it and you might catch one or two right that's i just think of like when we when i've been down in mexico before and we've done it they they don't use live bait but i guess yeah. that's just it's a lot different there too you gotta think like we're fixed a lot of times we're fishing live bait we're fishing like uh fixed structures we're fishing oil rigs and uh, things like that. So you can put the live baits out in front of them and, you know, m- make it happen. And you can troll them too, but like trolling over there a lot of times is big, you know, so, a lot more, lot more ground to cover. So they're attacking like a big bait ball and you, you're trying to mimic that. Is that, is that, am I getting that right? Yeah. A lot of times you're putting, you'll put out a lot of bait in front of the rig and the fish will see it come up and then you can start hooking them. Is it just yellowfin or is that just the main one y'all target down there? Are y'all catching uh, other we, stuff too? We target, uh, we target a lot of yellowfin. Um, they target everything under the sun, man. Whatever, <laughs> yeah, whatever's in it. I mean, blackfin, yellowfin, tuna, you know, uh, marlin. Uh, swordfish has become a huge target. I, I keep mean, hearing people talking about that. What is that another one of those things? Like, it's just, it's the hot, like, it's the hot uh, species for the moment. Like, <laughs> I, I honestly have, yeah, I hear a lot of people talking about they want to get their first swordfish. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, so whenever I first got down to Venice, you know, uh, there wasn't any daytime sword fishing. They did a lot of nighttime sword fishing. And, uh, I mean, I'm, I can say I'm still a novice compared to some of these other guys, but they, uh, cause they're not easy to catch. Well, 
it the, can't, just like anything else, the, right? Yeah. If they're if they're if they're biting, they can be. But yeah. uh, the swordfish, I mean, they they weren't really being targeted here in the daytime. They figured out a lot of that on the on the East Coast, and uh, it wasn't until like 2015, 2016, a lot of the guys started figuring it out, and now they're really really good at it. Like, yeah, I mean, they'll go and catch their you know, seven, eight, ten tunas, whatever it is, and then on the way in catch a swordfish and make the trip. Oh yeah. That's I mean, awesome. <laughs> uh we got we got Mitch in the comments here uh wanting to know if uh any of the any of the Mexican Gulf boats are gonna be fishing the Billfish tournament out of Biloxi this year. Not that I know of. I don't take my word on that. They I don't think so. But uh it, it probably depends on the categories. I know one year they had yeah. the swordfish category. I don't know if they're gonna have it this year or not, but that's kind of a well, it's hard. It's really hard. But we're not going to go enter a tournament whenever you're competing for for Blue Marlin. Whenever you're competing against those big, the big uh, guys, those yeah. guys are so good, man. It's it's. I mean, that's all they fish for, you know what I mean? And and they have these real big, expensive sounders that, I mean, yeah. you're not going to pull up to one in one of our boats and actually compete. Do y'all do y'all do y'all have a lot of people who come down there to fish tournaments? It's mainly just mm. charters. No, no. Yeah, uh, we don't get a ton. I mean, I know Kevin. Kevin just fished that one that they had in Venice uh, a couple yeah. weeks ago. I think he got bumped down to third or something. But somebody yeah. caught a big tuna down there. I saw the picture. I can't remember who. Oh, it was. they got a pile coming. Well, the boats that can go out there right now. You yeah, know? it's pretty rough down there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's pretty rough for sure. Dang. So what's the what's the plans for the podcast going forward? Are you gonna are you got like a hit list of uh, the captains that you're working your way down? Are you gonna branch out to you know things outside of just the captains? Or what's uh, what's it, what you got in your head over there? Man, I, I just want to keep it going. I, I want to try to keep it going for a long time. That's, I like that. That's kind of the idea. So, like, if I have, if I only get 10 followers this year, then it's that's 10 more great. than last year. Right. So, if I can keep it going for a long time, it's just a, a deeper following. I also think the following through a podcast is a lot different than a following, like an Instagram follower. Or oh, yeah. Because like it's true. Because they, they know it's what you're something about. Something real yeah. to it. You know what I mean? There's, uh, it's, it's, it's definitely cool. And, it, you know, another thing is, is, uh, you know, through be, being a guide, one thing that I did my whole, my whole off season, uh, since I've been a guide was I do like backpacking trips. So I'll buy a plane ticket and just go somewhere. So like I've been to uh, Costa Rica for a month. I've been to uh, Fiji, Australia. Dang. Sounds terrible. Edition. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Bali, Thailand, Vietnam. I've done a lot of that kind of stuff. And the whole idea, I didn't really realize it my first couple trips, but well, my last couple, it's, you know, people down here in America a lot, you don't really travel a lot. No, yeah. no. And especially not the way you're talking about. Yeah. Right. <laughs> weeks or months. Months at yeah, a time. Not right? at all. But the 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 idea that I've kind of came to is that, you know, whenever somebody comes with me, I never really understood why they just liked the boat ride or they just liked, you know, the the things that I kind of overlooked. Well, you take it for granted because we do it all the time. Right. But yeah. whenever, you know, I, I went all the way across the other side of the world and you start just walking down the street and you think everything's cool. Right. It kind of puts you into a perspective as to why people are coming with you and mm -hmm. what they're actually looking for, you know? So, you know, that's one of those things that I definitely, uh, I value a lot. I learned so much from traveling <laughs> the times yeah. that I've had. What's your favorite spot you've been to on an extended stay like that? Oh man, they're all so cool. It's hard to say cause they're all a completely different experience. Um, any kind of traveler you ever meet, um, they'll tell you that, but, uh, I really like diving. I really like the water. Fiji was mm -hmm. definitely up there. Bali was definitely up there. The it's culture that comes from those type of places is unreal. Yeah. Um, outside of fishing, though, Vietnam, if anybody ever wants to go to Vietnam, psh, go. Really? <laughs> Don't hesitate Sweet. and go. That's yeah. awesome, man. I, I would love Such to do something like spot. that. Yeah. And I'm assuming you're not just like staying at the resorts and staying in the hotels. Like you're out there getting in the, uh, the so middle of the. I did a lot of uh, like uh, hostels, Airbnbs, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. the, the hostels actually were some of my favorite just because you meet a lot of people that are doing the same thing as you. Mm -hmm. You're not, uh, you know, if you stay in like a resort in some place, you're probably going to meet some higher class people that might be a little bit better than you and they don't <laughs> really want to talk to you. Yeah. you know? But if you're in a hostel and you're traveling alone and the other person does too, I mean, that's some real people you meet there. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, 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 it's really, really cool. Some of the people 
that's one of the podcast ideas I had. But that's kind of why I got into this was because I met some like backpackers from like the 1960s and 70s. Um, and hearing some of their stories, the way that they had to backpack, like compared to the way that I get to backpack. <laughs> yeah. Is light years different because it. like, I mean, dude, I'm not kidding you. Whenever I went to Bali, I booked a one way plane ticket and I would book, you know, places I was staying and stuff as I was getting off the plane. You know, that that wasn't a reality just five years ago no, or even no. 10 years ago. You know, back then you, <laughs> you had to walk and find it. Oh, dude, like, it was real. tough. It yeah. was real tough. And like now it's so easy, man. You can find things to do and people to help you. Yep. Every Everywhere you go, people speak English now. Yeah. I mean, it's That's and it's cool. the easiest time in human history to travel. And then there's I don't know. I hope anybody listening. If you're thinking about traveling, do it. Go travel. It. Uh, let's catch up on some of the comments. Uh, Craig Baller is uh, asking uh, if he, to ask you if you know how to catch triple tail. <laughs> I'm assuming. Oh yeah, well, we got. Go ahead, go ahead. No, I'm just. I'm assuming that's a loaded question. Uh, it's a loaded question. Yeah, I, I've, I've I've got lucky a time or two. Well, to go into that, you just caught a yeah uh, so hoss with uh so yeah so if you guys want to look uh check out the outdoor channel um i think it aired this morning it's going to air uh saturday and sunday morning as well but uh big water adventures with mark davis yeah uh, we just did a we did i did three shows with him this past year actually and uh this one was definitely one of my favorites uh i caught the biggest triple tail in my life it was 38 pounds 38 38 five. Yeah, man big man, one man 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 uh we got uh let's see who else we got uh mitch bronson says that the uh let me read it off the swordfish is back this year with a two hundred seventy five thousand dollar jackpot if you break the current tournament record let's see the, i do hear it. that let's yeah. do it so that's uh i want a swordfish eyeball some serious money get, um Craig to do all his work. You ever see Craig Bumfield? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Wow, that's sweet. <clears throat> Every time I think of Triple Tail, I think of when I, him. He always puts those cooking videos up after he catches one. <laughs> like when he's, you know what I mean? That's what I. I want that. I to. want the cheeks out of that thirty-eight pounder. Oh, I bet dude, that was, they were like the size of your hand. Yeah, dude, that's crazy. what I'm talking Craig about. Craig actually cut them out. Believe did right. he? Yeah, he did. He, was he over there with his cane pole? <laughs> yeah. It was funny. So I caught um I caught a thirty-six pounder the day before. I caught that thirty-eight with that morning with the show. And Craig was coming down to do the Giatakus of those yeah. two fish. And uh, those are he sweet. wanted to go out and try to catch one. And I'm just like, man, I already caught these two. Like, I ain't no way we're going to catch a giant. You know what I mean? <laughs> and, and sure enough, we go out right at sunset and he's got his damn cane pole. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and he caught a 32 six. It's pretty crazy. Now, do y'all fish in the same way you fish over here? Just structure, floating structure, they underneath? Um, yeah, pretty much all the same ways. We catch a lot of them on float and stuff. Yeah. Uh, from time to time, fix structures, uh, channel markers. You catch them yeah. a lot on like the south Southwest Pass channel markers. I've caught them there. Uh, just kind of just got. There's no real spot. You got to just. Gotta you got to feel. You got to feel what's going on. You got to like read the water a lot. There's, Sleepy there's a lot giants. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Hunter wants to know uh, how much was your. I'm assuming your triple tail. The weight. How much uh, was it off of Lewis's world record triple? Louisiana. Tail? Oh, is that okay? Probably. Uh, um, yeah. Yes. Yeah, there I it is. think the number one is 39, 39, so, nine, so damn, you were close, right? Eight. Yeah, I think it was number four. Oh, you, couldn't was. Have, you couldn't have shoved the X fingers. <laughs> <laughs> I think Goodness. it was number four in the state. I think that's not bad, yeah. no, especially that Louisiana. Bad. Three. That ain't bad at all. But, uh, uh, that that's yeah, that's a good day on the water. Oh man, it was awesome. Yeah, I couldn't. I I still get the goosebumps thinking about it because i like i said like that's one of the coolest things about fishing is you know I, certain things i'll dream about like and try and make them happen like you stay up at night thinking about how am i going to catch this 30 pound triple tail and to see it come and actually happen is is something you can visualize and then make it happen it's yeah. really really cool you know i've done it a couple times with different species and it's awesome yeah well, the podcast is we mentioned before it's audio only right now. Where what all platforms are you on? People that want to, you know, check it out, listen to it. Uh, where um, do they find you? Spotify, uh, uh, iTunes is the main ones that I tell people yeah, to go to. I to but I today. use Podbean, I think, so you yep. can yeah, you can Podbean. use it on all of them. I think it puts them all absolutely. All and all they need to do, I've been ha it's been up on the screen here the whole time. Uh, it's just Tuna Town Talks, right? Just Tuna type Town it in, Talks, boom, yeah. it'll come right up. Yeah, yeah. Check Facebook, it out. your main. Uh, so, yeah, right Facebook, and I I use uh, Instagram. It's cool, but uh, yeah, it's 
I don't post a ton. I post about every time that I I put one up, and that's about that's about it. So yeah, we got yeah. the uh, we got the uh, banner up here, Tuna Town Talks podcast. You can see it right there. Just look for that uh, that logo right there and check them out, man. I I got a feeling you got a lot of killer stuff on there. Yeah. Uh, and I want to also flash here while people are watching. This is the Mexican uh, Gulf Fishing Company's logo as well. So just look them up on Facebook. Um, I'm assuming that's a good place if people want to book a, a trip yeah, with yeah. you. Yeah, go If you go uh, on their Facebook, you can find a link to our website. And actually on our website, you'll have all our open calendars. So you can find all the dates and whatever else and just book us directly through the website. It's usually the easiest way. Hell yeah, man. Work, man. Well, dude, is there anything we didn't touch on with the podcast or anything that you want to say to the people that are watching, listening on the uh, on the podcast? Oh man, y'all come out to Venice and uh, come book a trip and hang out. Yeah, huh? Come on, hey, come it's hang definitely, out. Man. It's definitely something if you've never done it before, like you really are missing yeah, out. You, you gotta go, go check it out. Yeah. It's a, it's a it's an experience, man. It definitely is, man. There's uh you know I've done a little bit of traveling, like I said, and there's there's it's really a unique place to find a major current in one of the largest rivers in the world meshing together i mean it just it's it it i haven't found a place that i thought was even came close to what venice has to offer so right it's yeah. pretty awesome people That's go awesome, check man. it out don't take our word for it go check it out right <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well look man thanks so much for your time for coming in here and talking to us today looking forward to see all the cool stuff that you do with the show i love to hear you're you're playing the long game with it i think that's extremely smart yeah. Uh, I think you can put out some cool stuff, man. Thank It'd you. Thank awesome, you. Man. Hey, and guys, I think can't thank you all enough. And I'm a huge fan of y'all show. Forever. Thank you. Man. Appreciate well, we appreciate it, man. that awesome. as well. So, uh, and thanks everybody out there in the uh, interwebs land for checking us out, yep. for watching. Thanks everybody on the replay and on the audio podcast. We'll see y'all on the next one.